So this is a image of our first loca sampling location. Uh, our target Rubion is on the right, and you can see this is a paver stone. And while we failed to acquire a solid core at this location, we, we believed it to be a result of the actual properties of the target. But we also needed to make sure that we didn't have a problem with the sampling system itself. So the engineering team, working with the project science team, sought out to reach a new target, and we nicknamed this target. We found a target which we believed to be less weathered and more robust, and nicknamed the target Rochette. So in this next image, you can see this target Rochette, and you can see the robotic arm placed on that target. Now, prior to sampling, we go through a series of pre-sampling steps. And here, you can see that the Watson image is actually observing different locations on the target to assess where we may want to core. On the right side of the image, you can actually see the coring tool, and it currently has an abrading bit installed. Now, we use this abrading bit to create a five centimeter patch and remove a few millimeters across of the top of the surface so that we can see the internal structure of the rock and evaluate its composition with the science instruments that we have on board. Now, after reviewing uh, the abrasion of this target, which we can see in this next image, uh, the engineering and sampling team felt quite conf uh, engineering and science team and sampling team felt quite confident uh, about proceeding with an acquisition in this rock. And as Lori mentioned, not only did we receive, did we core and acquire, acquire and store one sample, but we acquired two rock core samples. As we were evaluating uh, this target, the science team found, very, uh, th found this target to be a very high value as well, and we proceeded with our paired sampling strategy. And the second sample was acquired just two days after we acquired our first sample. So the height of each of our two rock core samples, uh, the first uh, was 5.9 centimeters, uh, the second 6.1 centimeters, and with a target depth uh, for acquisition being 6.6 .6 centimeters, you can imagine we were all very, very pleased with these results. The volume is measured by an internal station um, inside the cavity of the, or inside the rover itself. So personally reflecting on this moment, this has been the culmination of so many years of so many people's hard work and time and effort. And I know that when I joined this particular project in 2014, I wanted to be a part of this moment, to be able to achieve something that has never, ever been done before. And while it definitely was a very long time waiting, I think all of us can say that it feels fantastic to be able to be up here and share this all with you. But of course, building spacecraft and operating them on Mars does not come without its challenges. Uh, but these are the challenges that keep us all going and motivated to do what we do. You know, whether it's building a piece of hardware and finding that it doesn't do what you intended it to do and you need to redesign it during development or, or schedule slips because that's just how long it takes to perform the work or having Mars react to you in a way that you never experienced in your ground test program, these are the challenges that continue to make us better engineers, better scientists, and better teammates. Like our Perseverance rover, this team continues to persevere and maintain the confidence in our engineering capabilities, as demonstrated now with our two sealed rock core samples. We all take significant pride in continuing to do things that are hard and challenge ourselves. But we know, and as demonstrated by what we have just done, that continuing to work as a team, we really can achieve these amazing accomplishments. So to tell you a little bit more about how our sampling system works, I'd like to introduce you to Matt Robinson, our Strategic Sampling Science Team Chief. Thank you, Jessica. The sampling and caching system is the most complex mechanism ever flown into space. However, it's the appropriate level of complexity for the job that we've asked it to do. And so far on Mars, it's performed absolutely beautifully. The robotic arm has a coring drill on the end of it. 
it places and preloads the drill on the rock target. As the coring drill drills into the surface, the sample enters a sample tube. And here's an example from our test program of what the sample tube looks like. Start the video, please. Then the robotic arm retracts from the surface and drops off the drill bit with the now filled sample tube into our sample processing center. There's a sample handling arm which manipulates the sample to take images of the sample, to measure its volume, to seal the sample tube, and then to store it on board for potential future return. In our first attempt to acquire a core at target Rubion, we, comp we commanded the sampling system to acquire and process the sample on the same Sol or Martian day. For our second sample attempt at target Mont Denier, we wanted to do things a little bit differently. And what we did was we acquired the sample first or attempted to acquire the sample first. We then paused before processing the sample so that we could confirm that there was a sample in the drill and then the tube. So next image, please. So if we look at the images on the left and the right, these were acquired after, these images were acquired after we picked up the sample, but before processing. On the left, you can see a beautiful image of the core within the bit and tube. But on the right, it's not so clear that we actually have a core in the bit or the tube. So what happened between the left and the right? And the answer has to do with our process for acquiring a core. When the drill breaks off the core to capture it, sometimes we get a little piece of rock stuck between the sample tube and the drill bit teeth. In order to mitigate that, we point the drill bit at a bit of an angle and we perform a couple brief percussion activities to try to either shake that little piece of rock out of the bit or to force it down into the tube with the rest of the core. The image on the right is after that procedure was executed. So when these images came down and we took a look at the one on the right, we knew one of two things had to have happened. Either our core sample was ejected out of the bit during that percussion activity, which we thought was highly unlikely, or our core sample slid down into the tube and we just couldn't see it due to the lighting conditions. So in order to not process an empty sample tube, what we decided to do was take an extra day, acquire additional images under better lighting conditions, just to verify that we had a sample. So just imagine we had a couple days of being anxious. We then met in our command center. We were huddled around our computer waiting for the, the images to come down. And then the next image, please. And then this is what we got. We were rewarded for our patience. So you see an image looking down the drill bit into the tube and you see a beautiful core there. And at that point, our team was just absolutely ecstatic. Uh, I don't have words to say how we felt. Many of us have worked eight years or more to design, build, and test this system. And this was just the fruition of our efforts. And we were just thrilled uh, that it worked. But our job wasn't quite done. We had to process the sample. So we gave the go ahead to proceed with processing the sample. Next image, please. So what we see here are a series of images at our vision station within our processing center. And you can see as we move the tube up into the camera, our sample comes into focus. This is the absolute best view that we have of the bottom of the core. And we're rewarded once again with an absolutely beautiful image. After that uh, was finished, 
We then had to seal the sample. Next image, please. So this is a before and after um, of the sealing process where we could see that it was activated. These image was, images were taken again at our vision station. And then finally, we stored the sample on board. Now the resulting core that we got was roughly six centimeters, which is about two inches. And it would look probably something like this one. This is a sample from our test program here on Earth. Well, Mont Denier was our first sample acquisition and processing. A couple days later, we processed our second sample at Mont, en at Mont Agnac on the same rock. But our job's not done. We have an additional 35 sample tubes to acquire samples and to process. So we have a ways to go, but we're excited to have the opportunity and we're thrilled to have the challenge.